A human brain A rhesus brain What do they have in common? Can instincts and cognitive behavior be studied and correlated between different species of primates? Can modern technology help? We'll find out in this episode of Investigative Videography. Yes, that's Lowena, the increasingly frail matriarch of the namesake troop. And there are two of her daughters, Bo and Foxy. And there's another daughter of Lowena, Pepper, with her family. And that's Guajio, Pepper's last daughter born in 2022. Pepper is one of the younger daughters of matriarch Lowena. She began to bear grandchildren for her mother in 2019. So far she has one boy and three girls. And they all have been raised successfully as we speak. Unlike the norm in all other troops of similar size, about 50 adult members in total, Guajio has no other cousins or playmates of her age. Indeed she is the only baby in Loina's troop in 2023. Yes, she's the only one who has made it, unfortunately. Why is this so? That something wasn't right first came to my notice last year. When a female, whom I was told later as Bo, an older daughter of Lowena was caught on camera holding, no, more precisely, kidnapping someone's baby. And that baby belonged to Fluffy, Loina's daughter born in 2017. So Bo had kidnapped her younger sister's newborn son, her own very nephew. And there's Foxy, Loina's daughter born in 2018, her last kid. Foxy, Fluffy, together with Pepper are the only adult females capable of bearing babies in Loina's troop as we speak. The rest had all been sterilized by the authority. That son of Fluffy was probably only a few days old, 
and it was odd and very rare that a mother would allow anyone, even her closest relatives, to babysit her newborn. Fluffy tried to stay on the good side of her sister Bo. Essential if a mother wants to get her baby back ASAP. That trick usually works as we have seen this with many similar instances when a sterilized female kidnapped a baby, though such baby usually is of an older age than in this case. Fluffy's younger sister Foxy was here to help. Foxy was also expecting her baby soon. I couldn't help but wonder what's on her mind, putting her newborn nephew under so much distress. But I didn't think anything sinister then, like so many sterilized females who yearn for baby of their own. She would release the baby soon, either when her maternal instinct is satisfied or just out of boredom. And there's their mother, Lowena, who didn't spring into action at all. That baby was her grandson, and one of the very few babies in her bloodline in four years. Poor baby knew Bo wasn't her mum. Sometimes goodies might help to distract, and most kidnapping females would rather have a pair of spare hands to grab goodies instead. But not this time, it didn't work at all. Ironically, the goodies did take Fluffy's concern for her baby away for a moment though. She would rather have the baby than any goodies. We hear naysayers keep on preaching that a lot of their behavior is food-centric, clearly this wasn't the case here. Bo valued at that moment at least, something higher than food. It was raining on my way back later on the same day. And Bo still had her nephew. And Fluffy was still hot on her older sister's heels.
It did look like Fluffy wanted to settle the matter with her sister, Poe by herself. but she seemed to tolerate her niece, Paprika's involvement. And her younger sister, Foxy too. What happens in the family stays in the family. And it also rang true with them. I first spotted him an hour to two earlier on. So Bo had been holding on to her newborn nephew for at least a good few hours, or more and there was no way I could follow them as they had all disappeared into the forest above together. But just before I left, I saw Peppa with her newborn, Guajio. I suppose with a sister like Bo, a mother would always hold tight to her newborn. But honestly, I still thought that no harm would come to Fluffy's baby. This is something we have seen quite often in the last five to six years though this was the first time a newborn was kidnapped. That baby of Fluffy just lied motionless there. It's dead. At first I thought the baby might have died from a fall, it could happen in a scuffle up in the trees. And we know a mother could sometimes become more proactive to get her baby back from the kidnapper if the ordeal had been dragging on for too long. But it's not the case here. There were no visible wounds or any blood stains, and the baby's rigid posture suggested to me that the baby died while still holding onto her kidnapper. Starvation and dehydration had killed the baby. Fluffy's newborn of only a week to two old. He was also Bo's nephew. Rigor mortis had just set in. The baby had only been dead for less than few hours. I can't imagine the distress this tiny soul had been put through.
What was the last thing on its tiny mind? How could Bo be so cold-hearted? Turning her back on both of her own sister and nephew. Bo carried her nephew's body like it's her own baby. And was grooming it like it's still alive. She had never once let her sister to have the baby, whether it's alive or dead. Back. She wouldn't take any chance at all. She carried that body for another two weeks. By then Fluffy had more or less moved on, but Bo still cherished and guarded it. Until it had all shriveled up, and was no more than a tiny bag of bones and fur. With a baby in one hand, she could get less food than everyone else in her troop. But she didn't seem to mind as long as the baby, or what remained of it was still in her possession. Her behavior seemed to be driven by her yearning for a baby of her own. But it had become an obsession that killed. Let's hope it was just an one-off obsession. Nearly two weeks later in June, Foxy had also given birth to her firstborn. Another boy, Loina's second grandson that season. I couldn't find Bo around. Perhaps she had changed, or her yearning had been fulfilled, though that had cost the life of her own very nephew. In any case, Foxy must have taken heed of what had happened to her sister Fluffy. Holding her baby tight at all time, she wasn't taking any chance at all.
Indeed so, she would rather keep a safe distance from everyone. Even during goodies times with the regular feeders. No one could come near to her and her baby. Even those who meant well. This was all done for a reason, baby. Only her sister Fluffy could come near her. Sadly, Bo was just lurking around, waiting for an opportunity. It's Bo, she had struck again. And there's the baby's mother, Foxy. Like her sister, she also took the cautious Doolittle approach. According to the literature, Foxy is supposed to be the heir in waiting, the next most senior female in the troop after her mother, Matriarch Lowena. But so far from what we have witnessed in the wild, this is not necessarily the case. An older daughter can wield more power. And we have seen how Fluffy and now Foxy seem to fear their older sister Bo, who's handicapped in one hand. Foxy's baby is in her own aunt, Bo's hands.
Guajio has already lost one cousin. Let's pray she won't grow up alone, like her sister Pikio. We could only hope for the best, that this baby of foxes would not suffer the same fate as Fluffy's. Guajio would surely love to grow up with her cousin. I bumped into Loina's troop again about 10 days later. A regular feeder had just arrived. and there were scouts from Skullhead's troop too not far behind. I still couldn't spot Bo anywhere. But further up along the road where the feeder had gone to, I found Foxy. There was no baby with her.
in all likelihood, Foxy's baby had suffered the same fate as Flozzy's. Foxy's boy would be with his mum if he was still alive. He was not even a month old. Loina's troop had lost two babies one after another between mid-May to early July last year. Two precious babies that this dying troop desperately needs. Nana, beta female in Loina's troop, All her offspring are sterilized. Lowena, the matriarch, has only three daughters left who can bear babies. The rest are all sterilized. I have witnessed over the last five years the slow but relentless decimation and marginalization of Loina's troop. With only one to two offspring a year, this troop is suffering a net loss every year until it becomes totally irrelevant. Not only are humans responsible with their ill-thought-out sterilization program, but we might have created a killer in one of Loina's daughters. So who is Bo? And more importantly, why did she do that to her own very nephews? And was it the first time that she had done so? And will she strike again come this birthing season 2023? I will try to answer some of these questions in the next installment, by examining footage of her from before and from other sources too. I will also try to correlate and understand her behavior with modern findings in primate cognition and functional neuroanatomy. Stay tuned, my dear viewers.